Um, as you know, there are many impacts um, that climate change has on our indigenous communities. Our salmon are in peril. High severity wildfires are increasing. Drought is persisting. Weather is intensifying. Um, these factors are playing upon each other as a driver for extreme events. Um, you know, we're seeing flooding um, impacting um, habitat, uh, both in positive and negative ways. Um, but uh, we're seeing uh, press disturbance uh, where we should be having pulse disturbance. Um, which can be um, a significant uh, problem uh, for maintaining species like, um, you know, spring salmon or coho um, in, in um, these natural systems. So, um, you know, there's um, keeping in mind that there are, are positive impacts um, um, is, is a good idea. Um, we shouldn't lose sight of of, um, of this in formulating the, the story of our collective future um, moving forward. You know, on September 8th, uh, 2020, uh, the Slater fire started in Happy Camp. Um, this was one of the most significant uh, fire events that I've seen in my lifetime um, um, with, with about 30 years. Um, of fire experience. So um, this is becoming um, commonplace, it seems, um, that a lot of places are starting to see uh, fire uh, behave in this, this, this manner. Um, so the Slater fire, you know, it burned 120,000 acres in 24 hours. That's uh, a area that's 30 miles long and nine miles wide. Um, it burned um, over 230 homes. Um, it sustained 50 mile an hour east winds uh, with 3% humidity um, was the weather conditions at the time. And, um, you know, it's been until now uh, pretty rare. Uh, to see humidity drop into the single digits, um, especially when um, when combined with uh, with ignition potential. Um, but with um, you know with human caused fires, uh, and this one being kind of like electrical uh, infrastructure um, ignition, um, you know we're seeing more and more of this happening, um, and um, probably will continue to see more of this happening as we move into the future. Now this fire caused three deaths, uh, two during the fire um, and one in the recovery phases where a, a timber faller was, um, was doing some, some uh, recovery work and um, got, um, got killed by a tree. Um, as a local, local person that I've known, you know, most all of my life. Um, and so these impacts um, really hit home. Um, you know, when you start losing life, um, you know, homes can be rebuilt. It's a pain. Um, it's a hassle um, if you're lucky enough to get insurance. Um, but um, these things are killing people. And we're, we're actually lucky uh, that there weren't more people uh, killed in this event because it was only a matter of minutes um, um, when that fire was coming down into, into all of those homes for people to, to get up and get out. Um, you know, ultimately, the only thing that stopped this fire was the edge of recent fire footprints. Um, you, know, you have the 2018 Eclipse fire and the 2017 Oak fire. You know, the fire uh, blew right into the edge of those and um, made a turn and pushed to the north. Um, there wasn't a, a, you know, enough available fuel um, in those places that had recently burned um, for it to continue progressing um, to the east. Now the Kudurk name for Happy Camp is Athifu Wunukma. Um, 
This is now called Indian Creek. Um, but in Karuk language, this means the place where Hazel Creek flows through. This fire was a devastating event, but even in disaster, you know, there can be benefits. Um, two growing seasons later, our basket weavers have access to more high quality hazel than has been seen in multiple lifetimes. So think about this event. Think about how it could have impacted you. Think about positive and negative impacts. Think about what we can collectively do to enable all of us to address the impacts outlined in these presentations today. Write these thoughts down in actionable statements and share them at the end of these presentations. Prolonged drought has many impacts as well. Uh, droughts can contribute to potential fire severity, to water quality, quantity, and even access to water. Um, we have wells going dry um, in our territory. And, um, and uh, you know, we consider ourselves, you know, abundant um, in water, um, at least as far as stream flows. But uh, those, those are dropping um, as well. We're seeing conditions lethal for salmon and other species. This year we have no snowpack. Uh, we thought, though we did get a small reprieve in April, um, I don't think it's gonna be enough. Uh, in 2015, we had, a, had no snowpack. And in late June, early July, we had a heat wave. River conditions became lethal and we counted over 800 dead Pacific giant salamanders. Kodak people have known since time immemorial that when the salamander is in trouble, we're on the verge of complete ecosystem collapse. Knowing this, we asked ourselves, what do we need to do? Our ceremonies tell us that fire cools down the river. It is common knowledge that following these heat, heating events, lightning comes with the low pressure systems. As we exceeded 15% mortality in the remaining spring salmon stocks in the Salmon River watershed, we decided that we need to put smoke in the air to cool the river and save the salmon and salamanders. Civil regulatory hurdles got in the way. There was simply no way for us to go do this without a presidential disaster declaration. We drafted a request for emergency consultation, but were too late. Too late. Um, by, by the time we were ready to send it, a low pressure system moved in and the July complex started. Uh, we measured a three degree Celsius drop in river temperature over a three day period and the die off ceased. Smoke cover, smoke cover mitigated lethal water temperatures for the rest of the summer. The indigenous people have been systematically separated from many of our traditional ecological knowledge, practice, and belief systems. We retain much of this in our tribal community. My elders told me that the climate will change. They said that everything man-made will burn and our only solution will be found in reconnecting to our traditional foods, fibers, and medicines. So how does one go about doing this? Uh, we're looking at different actions that connect us back to cultural fire responsibility and the revitalization of our indigenous knowledge practice and belief systems. We look to what is present and we tailor treatments, response and recover, ef recovery efforts towards doing this. We work on policy change and we work with non-typical partners and we engage knowledge holders as leaders along our path. You know, the different species that are out there across the landscape, you know, can vary um, in different condition changes. And, um, you know, knowing what the slope position, you know, the elevation aspect, you know, all of these factors, um, whether it's, you know, shaded or was more historically open, um, these species, um, like those you find on this map, um, you know, can give you indications on, on how, um, you know, how that particular part of landscape wants to, wants to look. Um, 
and with climate change, you know, um, there may be some additional uh, variables to to consider. Um, but um, but really taking a fine green look at the landscape um, is what's what's really needed um, to be able to to make sure that these systems um, can um, you know not only survive in a, through a fire on a changing uh, climate um, but um, but maintain the diversity um, that is needed in these systems um, for all life that depends on it um, to to flourish we'll we'll have to think outside the box if we're going to enact enact and inspire the type of change we need in our homeland environments as well as throughout the rest of the world there are a few bullet points I drafted for consideration in this workshop. We recognize the following assumptions when flipping climate threats uh, to opportunities. States and feds have laws that create barriers. Tribes can write laws that overcome them. Stripping us from our responsibility was an unjust taking. People are starting to acknowledge and work to address this. Indigenous means natural to place, not anthropogenic to be regulated. Civil regulatory processes are a matter of the tribes, not the state. Our jurisdictions have more meaning and potential than most realize. Treaties remove rights, not grant them. Agencies believe that they need an authority from Congress to act when when in actuality, Congress needs to explicitly state what is not allowed when it comes to engagement with each individual tribal nation or community. The findings and declaration of policy in the Indian Self-Determination and Education Assistance Act are a government-wide mandate to meet the true needs of Indian communities. Absence of a specific authority does not translate to absence of direction to meet the needs declared. As for solutions and opportunities, uh, a few include working to restore cultural vegetation assemblages that can be maintained by prescribed fire or cultural fire practitioners in the low risk traditional timeframes and conditions in a changing climate. Enhancing these low risk conditions through fuels treatment, thinning, prescribed burning and managed fire. Building capacity to support the revitalization of indigenous knowledge practice and belief systems as we prepare to, as we prepare for, respond to and recover from climate impacts. Classifying cultural burning for restoration and maintenance prescribed fire for maintenance and wildfires as natural emissions. Working to support each other, our tribal communities, our neighbors and friends through partnership development and shared learning. Removing dams and use smoke to save our spring salmon and other declining species. And moving away from fear-driven messaging to that of hope, respect, and support for each other. We can create resources that can help to drive the change we need. For example, the IFMAT recommendations can include expansions, expansion of IRMP planning efforts to apply at the scale of identified territory, homelands, risks and our threats to be addressed. There are many examples um, of efforts like this um, that can be influenced. Um, the Farm Bill, for example, is coming up for another revision uh, process as well. And so progressing um, the dialogue um, that's needed uh, for us all to be able to work effectively uh, together in our in our homelands um, is um, is something that um, that it seems we're kind of ripe um, to do 
and um, and it seems like the time is um, right um, um, as far as alignment is concerned to be able to truly affect change. Um, with that, I guess I would I would recommend taking a look at um, the Good Fire Report uh, that we recently put out, um, and you know maybe take a look at California's strategic plan for prescribed fire. Um, cultural burning and prescribed natural fire. Um, I think they actually changed the title. Um, yeah, that's not the same title um, that it, it um, was published as, but that's what the, the final review draft was. Um, but California just, just put out a plan uh, for some of these things um, that considered this report um, in, in the process. And um, as we move into an era of, of shared stewardship, um, the more um, we can work to align um, our federal, tribal, and state programs um, with our bigger picture partnerships uh, to overcome the adversity we face, the better off we'll be um, in our home places. And so thank you again for the opportunity to speak here today. And I hope um, the outcomes of this workshop uh, can truly uh, work to drive some positive change. Thank you.